Today I have four rustic cottage fall decor DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. Project number one is a pumpkin milk pail or milk can. So I'm going to use a thrifted milk can. I'm going to use some of this oatmeal chalk paint and a paintbrush. And I'm going to use some Mod Podge. Plus these clings that I have been using in other projects, they have come in so handy. I'll go be, I'm going to be using these again. Okay, so to start off, we're gonna need to paint the milk can. It's not very good practice to just dip into the container like this. I intended to pour it into the little plastic cup, but I just didn't do it. I got in such a rush. Sometimes when the ideas get flowing, you know, you just, you go with the flow. So I'm just going to do below this line here where it curves down, I'm just gonna go all the way down onto the bottom and I'm going to complete it like this. And then I'll do one more coat of it, set it aside and let it dry. Once it's dry, we're gonna choose what clean we wanna use and where it's gonna go on this can. So I think this one is gonna work. However, it's a little bit large. It goes over my trim on the top and on the bottom there where it um, is a little edging on the can. I also need to remove the lines from the little shiplap backing that is on here. So you can see the little lines there and I'm gonna take those off just by trimming them off. I'm gonna leave some of the areas that look shaded. I'm just gonna leave those on there, but I do want these lines off. So I'll just trim around on those spots on all of the pieces that I'm going to use. So we're gonna add some other pieces too, and I'll do that as well. Just so it looks nice and neat and doesn't have anything to make it stand out too much and make it look like, hey, guess what? She put a window cling on the can. Yeah, we want it to look good. Okay, so now all those lines are gone, but you can see that the shaded little areas are still on there. So I wanna choose which side of the can I'm using, and it's gonna be this side because the other side had a little dent. Look, here's a tip when you're using something round. These little clamps that came from Dollar Tree have silicone or rubbery tips. You can press those under on each side and it will hold it still. How about that? We're gonna take a brush and our Mod Podge and put a good layer on there. Gonna try to rub it in pretty good, you know. We don't wanna leave too many really nasty sticky areas but I want to put enough on there where that cling is going to stay. So I'm just kind of holding it in place and then pressing it outward from the inside outward to get the little bubbles and air bubbles a chance to run from me. So that's what I'm doing there. And then I'm going to go ahead and go around, add some more. Like that and go over the top of the pumpkin too because we want it to all be in this matte finish to make it look like it was painted on the can rather than stuck on the can later. It makes a difference between your projects whether or not they look high-end. You want it to look like it belongs on here. So overlapping a little bit. Now I'm gonna choose my leaves. I'm gonna put another one of those on this side. Same process, holding it down, holding it in place so it doesn't slip around. There we go. Then you go ahead and put some more of it all the way across the top. Because this is matte and those clings are shiny, this will look matte and the paint underneath will look matte. It will all have the exact same finish. Just gonna add some more of those leaves on the back. So is this a maple leaf? Do you think this is a maple leaf? Okay, so I'm gonna press this one down here. You can use any clings that you have. These came from Walmart last year. Okay, so after we've got one coat on, this is what it looks like, but you can still see that it's reflective, so it's still kind of shiny. So I'll go ahead and put a second layer and let it dry, and then this is how it looks. Much, much better. All right, we're gonna take some of this, they call it eucalyptus. You can call it boxwood, you can call it whatever you would like, but I like it because it is green and kind of orangey, so it looks nice to me. 
going to take these off. You can see they're nice and full for, for Dollar Tree. And then this is a thrifted flower and it is beautiful. I got a bunch of these and some other ones that are just gorgeous. The color is so gorgeous. It's kind of muted and faded and looks like it's at the end of the season. So it's just perfect. Now I'm going to show you this view and I'm going to arrange this from the top. I got a comment before that they that somebody said it wasn't helpful to do it this way, but I I think that that is not correct. I think that it is you can learn something from it from this way. You see exactly what I'm doing from the top. This is how I arrange it from above. So I want you to see what I see. Take that pick, flare it out, put it right in the bottom of the can. I think that's quite clear. And then we're going to do the same thing with this pick. Spread it out, put it straight into the can, move it around a little bit because we want to make some space for the flower, which bam, plop it down right in the middle. There you go. So that's simple. This is what it looks like so far. At some point, I may get a second camera so that I can do more angles and different angles, but for now, this, I'm doing the best that I can, and I hope that that is, is good for y'all and that it's okay for y'all, that you can still follow my instruction and you can see what I'm doing. Because I really, this channel should be about you, and I want it to be for you to learn. I want to share with you, so I want to do what's best for you. Now all I'm doing is adding some extra leaves that I got that were thrifted and these I believe came originally from Hobby Lobby and I'm just tucking those in there. Just um, here and there, wherever I feel like they need to be, but you can see what I'm doing. Seem pretty clear? We didn't use foam or anything and it's only one flower so it's a rather simple arrangement. I think it's gorgeous. This one will not be taken apart or sold. This one will remain in my house because I am going to be using this little beauty. I love it. All right, number two, Cottage Pumpkin Duo. Here we go. I'm gonna use my Mod Podge again, the little cup, two little scraps of fabric. They're in fall colors. And then I have two pumpkins that originally came from the Target Dollar Spot or the Bullseye's Playground, whatever it's called, but mine were, these were actually thrifted. They're little chunky pumpkins, but you can use whatever you find. Hey, if you want to show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. See the link in the description box below. A big shout out to Tammy, who is one of my viewers, for the coffee that she got me last week. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love, love, love. Okay, so take that Mod Podge. We're just going to put it all over the top of that pumpkin. Then I'm going to lay down my floral fabric. I think this is very cottage core fabric. It is very 70s funky. Yes. Going to add a little extra for the stem. The other pumpkin, I decided to add some of that same oatmeal chalk paint all the way around the edges that were black, just to give it a different look, give you a different idea of how you can do it. You can get pumpkin forms anywhere. You can definitely get them at the Dollar Tree if your tree, you know, if your Dollar Tree carries them. Um, and you can use the ones that are thinner. They don't have to be chunky and thick like these. This is just what I had, so I'm just going to show you. You know, like I've said before, this is for inspiration. So I'm just smoothing it down. And then you'll want to put your second coat on there. You're going to seal it in. You're going to make this kind of tough. So I'm going all the way around the edges and extending past the edges as well. If you want a more crisp look, go ahead and paint the front of your pumpkin white and that'll really show um, a lot better. But I like the muted look on this. So now this fabric with the Mod Podge is pretty thick and it's easy to cut with a knife if you know what you're doing and obviously I am still learning. But you go around it with your little knife. Mine came from the Dollar Tree. Or you can use some scissors and these are just cuticle scissors that I use for my little fussy cuts go around it like this and take your stuff off use regular scissors use whatever works for you the idea is to remove the excess then I'm going to take a coarse grit sandpaper and just rub the edges smooth you can see what I'm doing here 
You can use an emery board for this as well. You can use your sanding block. Now we're gonna do a little embellishment. I think these cute little rustic cottagey pumpkins could use a bow. What do you think? You certainly don't have to put a bow on there. You could do leaves or something like that, but I think little simple bows would do the trick. Sometimes you just need projects that are a little bit simpler looking when you have a lot of florals and other things that get a lot of attention. You don't want too much going on necessarily. I mean, for me anyway. I mean, you do you. However you like it, then that's what you want to do. What brings me joy is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to try to inspire you to do what brings you joy. So here we go. Our pumpkins are completely dry now. Remember that. Add some hot glue, and we're going to put our long stringy bows on there. I got cotton and jute and a little bit of orange jute. I think I thrifted the orange, but the other ones came from Dollar Tree. So they have twinsy bows. Very, very simple. It's an easy little project, and these would be so adorable to put on a, maybe a tiered tray or at your coffee station. It would be really cute. You could even print off some words, or if you have a Cricut, put some words on there. Follow me on my social media, on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. I would love to see you there. Number three, we're gonna do a shabby farmhouse pumpkin. That's right, shabby chic farmhouse. I'm gonna start off with this Dollar General pumpkin that I got at the thrift store. I know it's Dollar General because the tag is something I'm very familiar with. I'm going to take off my leaves. I'm gonna stretch out the little tendril here, give it some legs, let it move around. And see how easy it is to remove these embellishments. I'm gonna take my thankful sign off. And don't worry, you have another one of these that hasn't been worked on yet. We're gonna do it in another project. I'm going to use some spray paint and change the color. I've used some craft spray paint here in a tan color. And just spray it down there. I put one good coat, it didn't even take two coats, and did the front and back and the base trying to decide now what we're going to do to make this one special. So I'm thankful, and here we go. I'm going to put the thankful on here. I'm gonna use this thrifted ribbon. It is wired ribbon. It's pretty wide. It's two and a half inch, I believe. I'm going to take some scraps of greenery and these little flowers that I got at the thrift store. And this little rose from the thrift store. And then this is my little Monvict glue gun that I'm trying, and I love it. I will leave the link in the description for you. I'm very happy with it. So you can see here what I am doing with this. Little note about the glue gun. I am a Amazon affiliate, so I do make a little money, but it doesn't cost you anything else if you use my link. So I always put the link down in the description box if there's anything that you're interested in and I mention it. You can find it down there. I had someone reach out to me about this glue gun to try it. I've worked with this company before on a different glue gun. This one is majorly improved. This gun, I have no complaints about. It is, it has two different temperatures on it and I'm using the cooler temperature for these. That's why you see me touching it and I'm not burning myself. It does not drip at all, which amazes me to be a big full-size glue gun like that. It has the big glue sticks. It actually comes with three finger protectors and they work very nicely, even though I'm not wearing them because it's on cool temp, I didn't need it. And it came with a big pack of glue. So yeah, very happy with that. Okay, so then here we go with the thankful sign. You can see here the tip of this glue gun, I can get right in those small spots. And that's where I want the glue because I don't want it pressing out from underneath the sign. I don't want to see glue all over the place. I'm able to get that big glue gun under the tips of these words so that none of my glue is showing and not one bit came out. It was perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna take this greenery. And guys, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I just want you to know if I see something that I'm really pleased with, the price is right, I'm gonna share it with you. So I hope that doesn't bother anybody. I'm not a sellout or anything. That's, I don't have 
bad motives or anything. <laughs> um, yeah, I just like to share things with you. All right, so a little glue on the back, a little glue on the front. It's gonna hold those leaves in place. And I love the color of the leaves. I think they're perfect for this project. Kind of a neutral green. I think it it's kind of a something that would match into a lot of decor. And I think it looks okay too for the farmhouse decor. And it's simple, like the, the sign itself. And we're gonna decide where we want to add our little flowers up here and this looks good I'm gonna cover up those original holes because I thought at one point I might put a bow back on top but then I decided no I think the flowers will be enough so this little arrangement on the top is going to be the perfect thing yes I like that I like it, I like it a lot. Do you like this one? I wanna show you how to make a tendril in case your pumpkin does not have one on the top like mine has. You're gonna take some wire jute like I have here. I'm just twisting it down. You're gonna add glue to the ends where it's coming apart. There's my little finger protectors. So you're gonna add some glue to the end and you're gonna take your fingers and twist in the way that it is already going so whatever direction it is wound in you want to twist in that same direction this is going to seal that jute off glue it down to the wire so that it doesn't fray you can see me do that on both ends you can see it's nice and clean now exactly how it needs to be before it was messy and coming undone and i promise you when you cut it it's going to fray away from the wire but don't let that intimidate you because I'm showing you now how you can fix that because these are so great for these fall projects when you're using pumpkins and they're really good for wreaths or anything that you want to use. You can take a pencil or a pen or anything that is kind of cylindrical and then you just bend it around there and bend your edges and that's how you make your little tendril. Then you would want to put it, you know, toward the back or however you want to do it on your pumpkin. The top, the back, something like that. Okay, so that is this one. Now we're gonna do a cottage basket wreath. I always try to save what I think is the best for last because I wanna see who's watching my videos all the way through. So if you're still here, yay. So happy you stayed, cause I got a good one for you. I'm gonna use a thrifted basket. I'm gonna use a combination of thrifted and some recycle and some Dollar Tree greenery for this project. Plus I'm going to use this napkin and it's just a plaid fall colored napkin that I got from the thrift store as well this beautiful fuzzy sunflower that probably came from Michael's originally and these really pretty grasses okay so I want to make a little pocket down here the pocket is actually not going to hold the weight of anything it's just going to appear as though it's holding the weight see what I'm saying so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna fold that square into a triangle and then start putting a little glue down there so that it stays together when we start gluing it on the pumpkin. On the pumpkin, listen to me. Have I got pumpkin on the brain or what? The basket, I mean the basket. We're gonna lay it down, make sure that it goes down past the edges. I'm gonna use my clamps, the ones that we had before that I showed you before to get placement on the sides so that when we flip it over, I'll know where I want it glued. I'm gonna use my glue gun, still on my cool temperature, but you can use hot, whatever you wanna use, and start placing that down. You don't wanna pull too tight because you don't wanna distort the shape of your basket. Now, this is not a flat basket. It actually has a little bit of depth, probably about three inches of depth. It just looks flat if that makes any sense. You'll see when you start putting the flowers in and I flip it over, you'll see what I mean. Now, however you have to do this, do it. As long as it's glued down, if you wanna cut off your edges, you can certainly cut them off or you can leave it in place like this so when you take it off, you can use it for another project. That's what I intend to do, so that's why I'm doing it this way. I'll still have pieces of fabric that I can use. Just 
just kind of making some gathers where it will lay flat once, you know, when I get ready to hang it on the wall. I don't want anything to be in the way, so I'm just kind of neatly putting some gathers in there so it'll stay in place. Simple, simple. Probably did not need to show you all that, but you get the point. So now we have a pocket. We're gonna start putting in our grasses first. Grass first because it's in the back, it's the tallest one. So that's what I wanna go in the back. It's not secured down yet. We're gonna take some floral wire and wire it to the basket or zip ties or you can use pipe cleaners. Zip ties is what I'm using. You can get a big package of these at Dollar Tree and a variety of colors. I have black and I have white. So uh, this has, this weave is kind of an open weave. So I can actually place this down and secure it to the back quite nicely. I'll get everything secured and at the end of the project, I'll go back and clip off all of the extra. Now what I'm doing is kind of digging down to the bottom layers so that you don't see these on the top and just going over the bottom layers, the bottom bulk of it, and then securing them on the back. Leave a little bit of slack in there for adding more flowers to it, just a little. You can always tighten it up later when you need to. You're almost making a form to attach other things to. You want it to be sturdy. Okay, so here we go, adding this big, beautiful, single sunflower. I'm just pushing that down in there right behind where that one piece of grass is. You can see the bottom of the stems behind the grass. Then I'm just going to loop one of those ties across the bottom of that stem. And then in the back, I'm gonna tighten it up so that it doesn't fall out. I have it intentionally slanted to the side. Everything doesn't have to grow straight up. It doesn't have to be arranged straight up. Now, if you happen to have a pick that is large, but you don't have a whole bunch of individual picks, just cut it apart, simple enough. If it's scissors, if it's plastic, you can use scissors. If it has wire in it, just use your wire cutters and trim it off. And then we're gonna start adding these pieces in here or there. This is my rustic cottage core basket wreath that I adore. I love it. You can see here I'm trying to wiggle it down a little bit so that it gets into one of those other zip ties and then pull it down. It's not gonna go anywhere. This piece will not be outside. This is not an outdoor wreath. Um, we have a lot of humidity here in Southern Alabama where I live and I have a feeling it would be mildewed or moldy. My white fabric would be turned all shades of yuck. So this is going to be in the house. I have varying heights and I have them in various places all over. And because we have those pieces of grass secured in there, now we can just place our other things around where the grasses are attached and everything should stay in place. Next, we're gonna move on to these beautiful little flowers that I think I got at Dollar Tree. If I didn't, you can definitely get some that are similar to this at Dollar Tree because I've seen them there before. You can see my little bull nose pliers or side cutters, whatever you want to call those. That's what I use to cut everything. They're really strong and good and durable. So I'm going to start adding in these now. These are in little clusters and I think they're just gorgeous. They're very wild looking to me. They look like something I would see growing on the side of the road. I just love it. Again, think about that. Think about nature as your inspiration. You know, if you're walking down the road in the country, what do you see? What's growing in the ditch line next to you? What do you see that's just makes you stop and look at it? You know, makes you stop and pick a flower. Those are the things that bring us comfort that we really love, and those are the things that we need to surround ourselves with. Those are the things that bring us true joy. So that's what I try to do with my decor. And I want beautiful things in my home. I don't want to spend a lot of money. I know I don't have to spend a lot of money. And I want you to learn that you can do the same thing. Okay, now for these little berry picks. I'm just gonna add those here and there. 
No rhyme or reason. Just like with the flowers, really no rhyme or reason. We're doing it like Mother Nature. We're doing it like God intended. Just here and there, wherever it can find the sun, that's where we're putting it. Nice. Now, I know y'all have Dollar Tree bags. Y'all can use these for stuffing. Recycle, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just kind of rolling these up, folding them, flattening them out, and pressing these down to make the to form the bottom. Then I'm going to take some of this Excelsior grass and stuff this all on the top. You can also use those hula skirts from the summertime from Dollar Tree. They'll work good here too. So they're just crumpled up and they just look like straw and weeds that are starting to die back. I think it's perfect for this. You can use moss if you want, but I really like the color of this with the rest of it. I think it's so pretty. Now we need one more thing in here. We need some vegetation. We need some gourd or pumpkin in here. So I'm just trying it out with a little pumpkin, which would go great. You could just put a dowel in it and poke it in there. Or my gourd that I got from the thrift store already had a pick in it. So there we go. I'm just going to stick that down in there, and I like it. I think it looks good. What do you think? Be sure that you look at it from all angles, fluff it around, bend stuff where it needs to be bent, press stuff back, move it if it needs to be moved. Do what looks good to you. Then I'm just going to use a piece of jute cord on the back, right in the center, to make a little loop knot so that we can hang it up. And here are our finished projects. I had four projects here, five items from four projects. Which one is your favorite? Do you like the basket wreath? Do you like the little pumpkin duo set? Do you like the shabby chic metal pumpkin? Or do you like the can, the milk can? I don't know, for me, it's a toss up. Of course, when I make things, I like them all, but I have to say for my style, the basket and the milk can arrangement are my favorites. Thank you so much to all my subscribers who've been with me from the start, and welcome to all of you who are new here. I'm so glad to see you. I have lots of fall inspiration coming your way. So thank you for stopping by, and I'm going to see you again real soon. Bye!